Today, I'm going to try to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon X with only completely random Pokemon. But not only that, all items in the game will be randomized and all abilities too. Meaning we have no idea what we're going to get out of this and all trainer Pokemon will be random too. With the potential of even facing some legendary and mega Pokemon. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit nervous about this one, but very excited. Let's see if we can beat Pokemon X with only the first random encounter we find on each route, no items in battle, level caps in place, and the battle mode on set at all times. Now hear me out, random can be a lot of fun, but when you're looking for a new game to play, you don't want the quality to be random. Which is why today's video is sponsored by Mech Arena, a consistently fun pick up and play game that I've been in love with for over a year now. Coming from Pokemon, we all love collecting and battling elements in games, and boy oh boy has Mech Arena ever got you covered in this regard with wicked mechs that you can collect and operate in crazy mech shooter battles. In addition to being able to customize your mech weapons, skins, and the pilots of them to make the best combination for your playstyle, I also love the various different game modes like Control Point Capture, 5v5 and 2v2 death matches, and even tournaments too. The cool strats that you can employ never get old either. For instance, one thing I quickly discovered was that you can shoot with just one of your two weapons while the other is reloading, or shoot with both at the same time if you need more power, such as when an opponent is just about to capture your base and you think you're in the clear to reload afterward. Like all good games, Mech Arena constantly has exciting news and updates to keep things fresh. First up, this March is the Holy Event, which gives players the chance to earn some new skins and the ultra-powerful Missile Rack 16. Then it's time for the Shamrock Slam, bringing in the Sentinel Mech, whose tall shield ability makes it a Javelin fan's worst nightmare. The event also introduces the Helix Rack Homing Missile Launcher, a pilot named Diesel, new implants, and two deep green mech skins, my favorite color. Mech Arena is completely free to play on Android, iOS, and PC right now. And you can use my link or scan the QR code right here to get a free starter pack worth $30, Rocket Mortar 6, an amateur crate, and a skin to help kickstart your game. And if you're quick, you can add me as friends and we can play some matches together. So don't wait around. Alright, here we go and... Oh. Okay, I was not expecting that to be random too. <laughs> Setting off on our adventure, we... Oh man, could you imagine if the trainers themselves were randomized? Just like Getsus and Cyrus peeping in our window? Hey kid, you want to destroy the universe? After telling our peers to call us Big Boss from now on, let's get the show on the road as it's time to pick our randomized starter. And... Whoa. Okay then. Well, there's one cool choice at least. And come to think of it, these three do form a type triangle of sorts. Poison against fairy, fairy against dragon... It kind of works. Works gonna go with Dratini, of course, who I nickname Bella. Unfortunately, she won't fully evolve for some time, but I can't resist. You need to give that letter to your mom before you go. Hey, don't tell me what to do. I'm the big boss. Okay, fine. I'll go say bye to my mommy. Now, Shauna challenges us to battle here and keeps gloating about her chess spin, but... Liar! At least we do get an easy battle to start, but beginning a run with only rap as an attacking move is not fun. I can tell you that much. Checking out Bella's stats. Whoa! The battle armor ability? Amazing! This thing cannot get crit, which is huge for Nuzlocke's. Ooh, a hidden pathway behind the houses. Wait, there's no secret item waiting for me? Whoever designed that should be in federal prison for robbing me. It's time for Route 2 for our first wild encounter and... What the hell? Okay, uh, Species Claws activated. Let's try that again. It turns out we get a Nidoran male. Very cool, two of my favorite Pokemon so far. I name him Billy, who ends up having the Cloud 9 ability to cancel weather. Not amazing, but it does have a plus speed nature at least. It occurred to me that we're also going to need to find a random Moonstone among the items to evolve this thing. Uh-oh. Up ahead is another encounter location, Santaloon Forest, where immediately we pick up an air balloon. Wicked. And speaking of which, another air balloon pops up in the form of Iglybuff, our next encounter. It ends up having the Snow Cloak ability, weird, and, uh, will require another Moonstone eventually. Oh boy. Suddenly, one of our first trainer battles occurs, and, oh god, a Vibrava of all things? That's not good. I was expecting only first stage Pokemon at this point, and not only that, Bad, but it has Sonic Boom. For those of you that aren't aware, this move does 20 HP damage no matter what, and this early in game, we hardly have that on our Pokemon. There is literally nothing I can do as I switched into Billy, but Delia doesn't even have 20 HP, so I can't switch, and Billy goes down. 
Then I send in Delia, who gets paralyzed, then demolished by Sonic Boom, and finally, Bella has no hope at all, getting wrecked immediately to end our first attempt. What the hell was that? Cue attempt number two, I guess. I don't know how I'm feeling about this whole randomizer thing after that. Booting up our starters again. Ooh, this time we get these three, and how ironic that we get the Pokemon whose evolution just murdered us. Let's take it. Trap Inch it is, and ooh, the Sand Force ability. Amazing. Along with a plus special attack and minus speed nature, which could be half good, half bad, really. Our Route 2 encounter this time is a Noibat with Fairy Aura. Ironically enough, making moves that are super effective against it stronger. Huh. I name her Rebecca, and she has a plus special defense and minus speed nature. Not a great start. Back at the bane of our existence, the forest, this time we find an Ekans, which I catch and nickname Maggie, and who ends up having the stall ability, literally giving it decreased priority every time it moves. Ew. Why? Hitting up the first trainer again. Okay, a Gibble. That might be more manageable. And Jimmy indeed does pull it off, having access to Bite, even though we got crit on the very first attack. One good thing is that Trapinch has a base 100 attack stat at its first stage, the same as even two stages later as a Flygon. Unreal. It turns out, you just can't escape fate, as now we've made it to Route 3 and we get another encounter? Yup. Another Dratini. How in the world? This time, I decide to name her Bella again, but with two capital I's instead of L's. Get it? Roman numerals for two? Ah, damn it. This thing also has stall. A neutral nature, though, although I do miss battle armor. Never thought it would be so tough getting to the very first city, but we've made it to Santaloon where the first gym is, which we can hit up after a bit of training. The only mandatory trainer in here was kind of funny, as she did indeed have two bug types with her, and Jimmy was was able to make quick work of them. But it's time for the first gym leader, Viola, and, well, her type specialty is completely irrelevant, isn't it? Feels weird, and we have no way to prepare since we have no idea what she has, so, uh, let's go for it, I guess. She ends up leading with us feel as I get Jimmy out there. Even though our team is incredibly weak to ice, this actually works out well, as we have 120 power superpower, which is super effective, but she did growl us first. And we barely don't KO it in the red, as both both her attack and defense drop again. Knowing she'll use a potion though, I hit her again, and we get the KO. Nice. In comes her final Pokemon though, a Whalmer with us having really lowered stats. I have to switch, and I was going to go into Noibat, but at the last moment realized, wait a minute, this thing might have rollout. So I go into Bella, and she uses Splash. <laughs> But then, the rollout does come as we paralyze her with Thunder Wave. Whew. That will hopefully prevent her from getting too high a chain with rollout for it to do extra damage, as that could really sweep our team. And from here, I steadily wear her down with Twister repeatedly. Without a way to paralyze her, our whole team might have succumbed to rollout if I'm honest, but in the end, we emerge victorious and get the badge with over half health remaining. That was pretty wild. As a reward, we can now access Route 4, meaning it's time for another encounter. And this time we find... a Duskull. Cool. One of my favorite evolutionary lines, actually, as I catch it and name him Danny. Danny ends up having Sap Sipper, making him immune to grass, awesome, and a neutral nature, too. Let's go. Along the way, the random items are treating us relatively well, and I even found a Cherish Ball of all things, meant to only be for an event Pokemon, but we'll save that for a special encounter. After getting the amazing return TM from Dexio, we arrive in the biggest city in the region, Lumios. And I'm a bit nervous about what's coming up. That's right, it's one of the rare instances in which you have to battle a regional professor, Sycamore. Normally, he has the Kanto starters, but this time, well, let's find out. He leads with a Stunky of all things, as I get Rebecca out there. Jimmy is a better matchup, though, so I switch him in as he goes for Focus Energy. He then poisons us, and we miss our attack. Oh, man. He then hits Fury Swipes of all things after using Focus Energy, and thankfully only two hits, but both crit us. I then hit him with Sand Tomb, and it barely doesn't KO, but the residual damage damage does him in at the end of the turn. In comes Mankey next, and here I switch Rebecca back in for the super effective Gust after getting hit twice by low kick to about half. His final Pokemon is then a Charmander, and our ground type is too weak so I stay in, but Ember burns us as we then do like zero damage on him with Bite from the attack drop. Here I can switch in Maggie though for the Glare Paralysis, and even though we lowered our accuracy repeatedly, we do hit him below half. Eventually I'm forced to switch into Bella though, and he stayed paralyzed.
stabilized on the switch so I could resist Ember and hit him with a couple twisters, being left at 10 HP in the end. Our team got hurt quite badly there, but we do have fairly good coverage already. Now, technically, we do get a second starter pick here, as normally he gives you the Kanto starters, and our selection is pretty cool. Normally, I'd go with Sandile, but with our huge ice weakness on our team, I'm gonna go with Fletchling to help us out, who I name Emma, and who ends up having the huge power ability. No way. That is a terrifying prospect for a future Talonflame. And he gives us the Charizardite X for it. Uh, thanks. Real useful. In a nearby cafe, we meet Diantha, who pretends not to know who we are. Say my name. Selfie boy. You're goddamn right. Wait, did she just say she's a trainer in her off time? As champion of the damn region? Nearby, we run into Corinna with her two Lucarios, and... Oh, don't tell me those won't actually be Lucario in battle. That would be too funny. Route 5 brings about a wicked encounter for us, a Sentret. Why wicked, you might ask? Well, it turns out Melanie the Sentret has none other than huge power and a neutral nature. I'm gonna replace Ekans with her for now, as an actually good Furret is too good a prospect to pass up. In a double battle up ahead, I got to learn what pain really is. As they had middle stage Pokemon already, and in an 80 base special attack Vanillish smashed Melanie with an uproar and got a crit to take down our huge power Pokemon. Okay, that one hurts. A lot. But, as some recompense, we do find the Earthquake TM of all things, which is nuts. Route 6 brings us a Mareep with Tangled Feet, interesting, which I'll leave in the box for now. After this dude tells us in detail about his political affiliations, we also pick up the Soft Sand item to boost Ground-type moves. No way. Jimmy is going to be a monster in the early game. Not only that, but we find an even better item ahead, Bridge Mail M. How did I get so lucky? <laughs> Now, I was a bit worried having to face a damn Snorlax with this team, but, uh, it randomized to become a Starly. Uh, much more manageable. And in a stroke of luck, the random item gods blessed us with the Reaper Cloth. No way! The single evolutionary item we needed with our current roster. Let's go! I was a bit worried about that as Dusnoir is one of my favorites. A double battle up ahead illustrated perfectly what a randomizer is all about, as there was a ball toy with dry skin getting rid of its water weakness, but by the same token, that means it no longer has levitate so we could earthquake it into oblivion. Too cool. And then there's the just purely insane stuff, like a Grovile that turns out to have the illusion ability and was actually a ditto, but since it doesn't have imposter, it didn't transform. What in the absolute f is going on? After having replaced Ekans, our good old William the Mareep evolves into a Flaffy, our first evolution of the run, which should give us some good bulk. Nearby in the connecting cave, we can grab a new encounter, this time a Hopip, which I nicknamed Federica. While Jump Pluff is underrated in my opinion, she's gonna stay in the box for now. And same goes for our Route 8 encounter, a Slowpoke, which I named Elaine, as it just had Fairy Aura. Along the way through this route, I found a Metal Powder? An item I didn't even know existed, and apparently boosts Ditto's defense stats that hold it? Man, this randomizer is blowing my mind. Oh, I sure love the fact that you can have your rivals call you whatever you want in this game. I sure am, peasant. In the glittering cave, we can grab yet another encounter, this time a Solosis that I named Wilma. Huh. Gonna have to check the ability on her as I can't remember the last time I've used one of these. Emma, the huge power Fletchling, also evolves into a Fletchender, beginning to fulfill her potential. With that said, we did have quite a close call against a Team Flare member in here as he had a metronoming Togepi that honestly could have ended us. But we pulled through on just 10 HP in the red after a seismic toss. Not only that, but a Yamask yeah later on also gave us hardcore trouble. I mean, look at our team. Everything got brought down to the red except a fellow ghost type which I was forced forced to send in, hoping he'd use Nightshade instead of Hex. And he did, so with him paralyzed, I go for Astonish, hoping for the Paraflinch. And we get it, so I go for a Nightshade of our own, hoping it's now enough. But it wasn't, as he barely survives and takes down Danny. I was so upset about this. We even had the evolutionary item needed to fully evolve him. Why? Checking our Pokemon in the box, it turns out Wilma has Unaware, which is pretty darn good, so she's gonna replace Danny as we also found the Psychic TM and the Odd Incense to boost Psychic Power. 
After scoring a few numbers from the babes on the beach, we arrive in Silage City where the next gym is. Now the fortunate thing here is that the gym allows you to skip all the trainers if you know what you're doing, and in a randomizer that is very valuable as you never know what kind of hell spawn awaits you. The second gym leader is Grant, and again, it's incredibly weird going in with no planning, but let's see what he's got for us. He leads with a Porygon as I get our new encounter Wilma out there. Amazingly, Wilma has light screen and reflect, so I go for the former to boost our special defense. Turns out he only has Psybeam, which is resisted, then our Psychic nails him to a quarter. From there, he just recovered and poisoned like a madman, meaning eventually we took him down. His second Pokemon turned out to be a Growlithe, not too bad in theory, but it has Fire Fang and does a surprisingly large amount of damage and somehow survives our attack. Huh. I have to switch, and I'm a bit worried about maybe a Thunderfang on Fletchinder, so I go into Rebecca instead, as another Firefang hits us below half with a crit. Sheesh. But we do have a berry, so I feel safe staying in. But then he goes for reversal out of nowhere, and even though it was resisted, it smashes us to the red before a final air cutter does the job. Man oh man, quite close, but we made it through for our second badge. As if things weren't getting crazy enough, you'll never believe this. I went to Route 10 to get our next encounter, but ran into a horde of Apom. And one of them had Arena Trap of all things, and the game doesn't tell you which one it is. So I was stuck there with all of them fury swiping and sand attacking me, so I couldn't hit them nor switch out. And after like 10 minutes of this hell, I couldn't do anything but helplessly watch as Wilma got taken down. These are not the kind of threats that I'm used to, but the last one was our encounter technically, so I caught one and named it Bert. I hate you, Bert but welcome to the team. In Geosenge Town, we have a battle that I've been fretting a bit, the one with Corinna. And as I thought, the Lucarios she has with her turned out not to be Lucarios, with her leading with a damn Kabutops, which I quickly realized is our team's worst nightmare, and especially Emma's who I led with. But it turns out Kabutops' early level up moves aren't the best, so thankfully we're able to pull through by switching into Jimmy with a stab, super effective, soft sand boosted earthquake, and then in comes her second Pokemon, an Altaria, which immediately smashes us with a takedown out of nowhere, and Jimmy survives on just 4 HP before landing a rock slide. Goodness gracious. But I have a funny plan here. I switch in Burt with rough skin and the rocky helmet attached, so in addition to the takedown recoil, she gets two other forms of recoil, then we can outspeed with return to win the battle. Now that was a funny strat. Our next encounter comes on Route 11 and turns out to be a horde of Slugma with one Meryl. And I guess the Meryl's fair game here, as eventually I catch it and nickname her Marina, who has strong jaw of all things, along with a timid plus speed and minus attack nature. Without having huge power, Azumarill likely won't be great, but we'll see what happens. Nearby, we find a spell tag to boost ghost moves, which is a painful reminder. This would have been great for a ghost type. If I had one! Reflection Cave is our next destination where we get a wickedly cool encounter, a fully evolved Espeon who I catch and nickname Dimitri. Dimitri ends up having the Moxie ability, which is normally fantastic, but for a special attacker just does not make any sense. But I'm gonna replace Dratini with him for now, as Dratini doesn't evolve until the next level cap anyway. Getting the Shadow Ball TM along the way for Dimitri, we arrive in Shallower City where the next gym is. And I'm always blown away by how beautiful the area with the Tower of Mastery is. What's not beautiful is the fact that we have a rival battle with Serena here, which I'm a bit scared for. She leads with a Galvantula, and I had Dimitri out first. A brutal matchup off the bat. I have to switch, so I go into Jimmy, and thankfully she just used Gastro Acid. From there, she hits a Slash for nearly half, then Rock Slide brings her to a third. A crit would KO us from here though, so I have to switch as I go in for Burt for the double recoil that brings her into the red, then she hits us again and takes herself down from there. Okay, not gonna lie, Bert's kinda growing on me. In comes Nidorino next, and this is an easy task for Dimitri to come in and nail it with a psychic to end its hopes and dreams. Finally, there was her Feral Thorn, and, well, we only have one thing that can even touch that thing, Emma, who unfortunately only has Ember as a fire move. Thankfully, we do resist her moves though, although Ember hardly does anything, even being four times super effective. It was a wild back and forth with no burns, unfortunately, but Emma pulled it off below half in the end. With 
With that victory under our belt, we can hit up the shallower gym, normally a fighting type one, and in this one you have to face all four trainers. The battles went relatively well on the whole, although we did face one incredibly scary Excadrill of all things. Knowing she was going to go for Slash, and that two-turn dig is her only ground move, I switched in William for Rocky Helmet Recoil, but she got a massive crit. Then did the same for Double Recoil on Bert before we avoided her attack and hit a super effective Brick Break, but she barely survived in the red. With no choice remaining, I sent in Dimitri, and she went for Dig this time, so amazingly I could switch in Emma, who's immune, and then outspeed with Ember for the takedown. After the battle, Bert learns double hit and now can evolve into an Ambipom, giving us way more power and speed, and also William ends up evolving into an Ampharos, our one source of bulk on this team at the moment. The third gym leader is Corinna, and I'm really hoping she has a less terrifying team this time around, and my hopes do come true at least to start as she sends out a Lombre. I lead with Bert, who, after the double recoil from her fake out, immediately annihilates her with return. Let's go. But in comes a Hitmontop next. Huh, I guess she is a fighting trainer after all. Our perfect answer here is Dimitri though, who tanks two attacks and nails it with a monster psychic one hit KO. Her final Pokemon is Furret, and it might not look like a threat, but I suspect that like Sentret, this thing has huge power. So I switch into Bert, and wham, we get nailed by a huge power critical hit slam to destroy Bert instantly. No way, man, come on. After the recoil she gets though, we can relatively safely send in William to tank another one, give her more recoil, and our thunder punch only brings her to the red. Damn it. I know she'll heal though, so I go for another to bring her near half, then I can't risk a crit on anyone else either, so I stay in, and yup, she gets another huge power crit to take William down. What the hell is happening? From this range though, I know that Dimitri can outspeed with the psychic for the victory, but at the cost of two of our mons. Huge power for it is a beast, but honestly those crits were what really did us in. Hey look, it's a Gigantamax Mega Lucario. Hey buddy. Please don't hurt me. After receiving our Mega Ring, we have to do battle with Corinna, who I know is going to have a Mega, but I just don't know what it's going to be. She says, Ready Lucario? Then proceeds to send out the Pokemon of ours that she just murdered in cold blood. Ampharos, of course. And not only that, but the Pokemon that she gives us, technically our Shallower City encounter that I purposefully waited for knowing we'd get the Mega Stone for it, is an Aerodactyl. Well, this ain't a good matchup, as we have nothing but ancient power and get pulverized by her electric typing. Huh, technically our encounter just died, didn't it? Brutal. Checking it out later, we also had a plus speed nature and unburdened too. It would have outsped light itself. Would have been really cool, but oh well. We do have one positive development as Bella can now evolve into a Dragonair, although it will still be a while before she fully evolves, and Marina also evolves into an Azumarill, but again, with no huge power, I ain't too excited. Next up, our Route 12 encounter, which does have me thrilled, a Porygon, which I catch and nickname Rick, and who has Poison Heal. Amazing, meaning it essentially gets free leftovers if we pre-poison it. Interesting. I'm gonna replace Noibat with him for now. Oh, are you kidding me? Now we get the Ampharosite? The Azure Bay also nets us something that we can use though, our new encounter, Clefairy, which I catch and nickname Fred, and who we'll check in the box later. At the train station, Diantha mentions the fact that Mega Evolution only occurring in the Kalos region could be a hint as to the secrets behind it, which absolutely astounds Sycamore. You're a professor and you didn't think of that? Well, he does redeem himself slightly by giving us the Fly HM, which should be wicked for Fletchender. Traversing through the hellscape of Route 13, the worst designed route in the entire franchise, we pick up an Inkay that I nicknamed Melina, and we also find one of my favorite items ever, the Assault Vest on a random rock. I'll take it. Right before the next gym, Serena challenges us again, and this time, I have a secret plan. She leads with an Alakazam of all things as I send in Rick. A tough looking challenge, but I had gotten the Eviolite from Shallower City to boost Rick's defenses, and we learn Signal Beam which does over half on Alakazam instantly. It does hit a Psychic and gets a crit which would have destroyed anything on our team, but Rick tanks it and we can take it down with another attack. Then, in comes another Psychic type, Grumpig. I stay in, she hits a Zen Head 
headbutt, but Rick tanks it and can go for recover to restore huge health. This was a brutal back and forth with Grumpig having rest, but over time Rick wears it down with super effective signal beam to come out on top. Her final Pokemon is her Nidorino, and with Psychic having been taught to Rick, he devastates her with two final attacks with the poison actually helping us due to poison heal. Man oh man, imagine if we're able to find an upgrade to evolve Rick and he'll still be able to use the Eviolite? What a prospect! In the Coomarine Gym, we had a horrifying battle against an Empoleon of all things, which I realized walls our team hard. But Marina was our one answer, getting swaggered twice to raise our attack, but it does confuse us, and over time, hitting extra power rock smashes hoping for the defense drops paid off as eventually we took it down on 33 HP left. The fourth gym leader is Ramos and I'm really wishing Emma would evolve before the cap but we're just one level off so I go in with a different plan. He leads with a Politoed and I send out Rick and I accidentally forgot to pre-poison him but this thing having Mold Breaker would have cancelled it out anyway. He confuses us on the first turn and we hit ourselves too, then he hits a Hypnosis to put us to sleep on the next. Uh oh. He eventually uses is Perish Song 2, which will KO both Pokemon in three turns if we don't switch. So to play it safe, I switch in Marina. We got swaggered again right off the bat though, and then got put to sleep again. I was like, nah, he's gonna die to Perish Song now anyway, but he preemptively switches. He knew to switch? This AI is better than I gave it credit for. Thankfully, he has to switch into a color change Chandelure though, which we hit hard with Surf with us below half, and here I realized it's a perfect opportunity to get Rick back out there but he confuses us again. Goodness gracious. Although we make it through for the Psychic, but he barely survives on a sliver before Hyper Potioning. This is nuts. We then get a Signal Beam off though, which now turns him into a Bug type, and Flame Burst hits us low before we snap out of confusion and can land a Psychic. One more hits us to just 10 HP, then we hit a Signal Beam now that he's become a Psychic type, and he barely survives on a sliver again. What is going on? Well, I know what I have to do. I switch in Emma here, who now has super effective fly against him since I turned him into a bug type, which devastates him in a single attack after he healed. Let's go. Nothing like taking advantage of the opponent's ability. His next Pokemon, a Sableye, survived the fly on the red before hitting us below half with knockoff, but then it turns out he has priority shadow sneak too, but Emma tanks it and takes him down with another attack. His final Pokemon is his Politoed again, and for it, I switch into Dimitri who got confused and put to sleep again, then smashed it with a critical hit before Parish Song was going to end both of us. That's right, since he can't switch, all we have to do is switch in Bella from there for his own Parish Song to take him down. That was an absolutely insane battle, but we got through Deathless somehow four badges. And for that, we get the ultimate reward as Emma evolves into a huge power Talon Flame. I can't wait to see what this thing can do. Not only that, but Jimmy also evolves into a Vibrava, which should help us in terms of typing. After being scammed for fresh water in the power plant, this random guy gives us the Flame Charge TM. Oh man, have you any idea what you've done? Whoa, goodness gracious. Hey man, did they have the NBA back in your day? It's time to meet AZ's shorter friend, the Eiffel Tower itself, aka the Lumio City Gym. After some tough battles, we arrive at the fifth gym leader, Clement, with a cool plan in mind. He leaves with a Pupitar, and I get Jimmy out there with the Eviolite. Pupitar turns out to be an easy one hit with a massive power earthquake. Quite a start. Then in comes Donphan, who is a bit more problematic. With that said, we do have Marina, who's a great counter, taking a slam well and then landing a massive power surf, but he survives on a quarter then hits us below half before another one does the trick. In comes his final Pokemon, Mien Xiao. This thing is very fast and very powerful, but we do have the perfect counter, don't we? As I get Dimitri out there who gets hit with a Drain Punch for over half surprisingly as it's a resisted move, and the speed tier is incredibly close here, but I think we have this? And we do, as Dimitri outspeeds with a stab super effective psychic to win us the battle. Nice. A cordial conversation with Lysander later and we run into these fangirls, one of whom says that she'll have her five million dollars for Lysander soon? I really, really need to know the context behind this, I, I just don't understand. Checking our Pokemon in the PC, it turns out Clefairy has Cheek Pouch, which basically buffs what berries can do, which would be amazing, and a plus special attack nature, but we haven't found a Moonstone yet unfortunately. Inkay's also not great, so I stick with our current team for now. All excited for our Route 14 encounter, I eagerly jump into the grass and... 
no, 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 no. <laughs> with that, we arrive in La Vera City where the next gym is, and wanting to kind of make a random themed outfit with an assortment of clothing styles, I come out and, hey, it doesn't look half bad. I, but wait a minute, that's tiny to you? <laughs> now technically, La Vera City has another encounter for us if we fish in the pond, but it ends up being a Jigglypuff, which we run into the same Moonstone problem with. Huh. Oh yeah, I never really noticed that this gym has a giant clock on it. I don't know if I've come back in this little path before. At least not in like a decade. Oh god, X and Y came out 10 years ago, didn't it? Speaking of which, let's hit up the La Vera City gym led by the gym leader, Valerie. And this time, I'd like to test out a new evolution of ours. She leads with a beautifly and, oh man, here comes Emma with the stab super effective huge power fly to atomize that bug. Then, the same goes for her Gengar too. Not too often you see a Gengar get outsped. Finally, in comes her Mandibuzz, and because I had the metronome item attached to power up moves that are used consecutively, we did huge damage to the red. Then, after her Tailwind and her healing, we can hit a few more attacks to earn us the sixth badge. Unfathomable power. Valerie then says, I hope the sun is shining tomorrow. Hmm, David Hume might have something to say about that. We also get the Dazzling Gleam TM, should be great if we ever get a damn Moonstone! While battling it out in the Pokeball Factory, we encounter a Furfru... Furfrau? I don't even know. But it's some form that I've never seen before. Ugh, that thing is an abomination. Kill it with fire. On Route 15 comes our next encounter, which ends up being a Psyduck that I catch and nickname Dominic. And we can also hit up the Lost Hotel nearby to pick up... A Vespiquin. Uh, we're not really having a hot streak with encounters here, are we? But on Route 16, we do find a pretty cool one, a Fennekin that I nicknamed Daniel. Moving onward, we arrive at the beautiful Frost Cavern, and yet another encounter is available to us here, but we end up finding a few Dusclops in a row, kind of funny as that activates our Species Clause since we already had a Duskull, meaning we have to re-roll. And what a re-roll it was, is we end up finding a Larvitar. I celebrated so hard here. I think that's a Pokemon worthy of our Cherish Ball, and we also got a critical capture on it. It was fate. I name her Amanda, and... We'll check her out in the PC shortly. But before that, we had a rough loss as I had Espeon out against a Sudowoodo and with our team weak, I couldn't risk the switch in, so I stayed in and it had priority sucker punch of all things, decimating Dimitri. Ouch, that one hurts. Back at the PC though, I check out Amanda and she has the levitate ability. Damn, getting rid of her ground weakness entirely. Let's go. I add her to the team and in no time she evolves into a pupitar. Not bad at all and a candidate for the Eviolite in the meantime. On the snowy Route 17, while riding on a Mamoswine, we find a new encounter, a Dragalge. Not exactly a safe place for a dragon type, is it? I name him Trevor and leave him in the PC for now. No matter how much scientific progress we make, we may never understand everything that happened in the past. Ma'am, this is a Wendy's. With that, we arrive in Anastar City where the next gym is, and while training up, we have a wicked evolution as our starter Jimmy evolves into a Flygon. Quite an upgrade. Serena won't stop pestering us, so this time I send out our newly caught Amanda with the Eviolite attached, and don't forget, at this evolution level, it gets ground-type stabs, so Earthquake straight up destroyed her Raichu and Nidoking, and almost took out her Drapion too, with a switch into our now fully evolved Jimmy then being able to complete the job. She then had a bulky Licky Licky in the back, but Marina was able to hold it down from there with the 120 power superpower and a final surf after we ran out of power points, being left on 44 HP in the end. Not only that, but Marina also saved our entire run against a dragon dancing Gyarados in the Anastar gym before we got to the seventh gym leader, Olympia. Emma was unfortunately over the cap at this point, but Amanda could handle her Espeon with two crunches. Then she sent out Sunflora. And I kid you not, this thing started causing massive problems on our team with Leaf Storm followed by Sunny Day and Solar Beam. We nearly lost Rick because of it, then Jimmy barely didn't KO and got brought to just 3 HP before being able to take that damn thing down. Who would have ever thought a 
damn son Flora. Thankfully though, her final Pokemon was a Rhydon, and with the special attacking Earth Power, we could take it down, as I knew the chances of it having Sturdy were infinitesimally small. Well, who would have guessed? It turns out Lysander is an evil bad man, and we must destroy him. Funnily enough, he just led with a Scoropee, so Emma was able to go on a complete rampage against it with Fly. Then his Kling Clang was able to be handled in a couple flame charges, as it just used a Totemize. Then both his Nidorina and Delphox were crushed by a huge power Fly each. Emma, you are a legend. But, I will say, things are starting to get a bit scarier with more and more powerful Pokemon coming up, like the legendary Cobalion that we encountered at one point, fortunately with Emma serving as a great counter. After Lysander cries like a little baby at the thought of his own crimes, question mark, we rematch him, and <laughs> this time he has a blissy. Thankfully, its defense stat is 10, so... Bye bye! Same goes for Espeon with a defense stat of 60 and in comes Muck. We have a perfect counter to this thing, don't we, as I switch in Amanda who not only resists his moves, but can counter with two earthquakes for the KO. His final Pokemon is Golurk, which did actually cause some problems, but it ended up using Curse, which gave us the perfect opportunity to take it down with a Surf from Marina. Not bad at all. Then, one of the Flare Admins had a Mega Metacham of all things, and thank god we had Emma out and that we didn't miss our Fly, or that thing would have wrecked us quite hard. It's time for some legendary madness as Xerneas breaks out of its, uh, tree cage thing? And as it turns out, Xerneas isn't a Xerneas at all. It's a shaman. Alrighty then. I mean, I guess it works. It's still a legendary, or mythical at least. The final Lysander battle is upon us and... <laughs> He leads with a Floette, which is easily taken out by Emma's Fly, and then his Zatu suffers a similar fate, although it did get off a Future Sight attack after surviving one. Then, in comes Snorlax, which I was not expecting. We don't have a great way of dealing with one, so I switch into Amanda to resist normal moves, but he uses Crunch, but it doesn't do much. Then, the Future Sight hits out of nowhere and brings us below half. Then, he uses Heavy Slam out of nowhere, but we survive on just 18 HP. Damn, I forgot he had that entirely. I have to switch, so I go into Jimmy as Crunch hits and gets the defense drop. I hit a rock slide hoping for the flinch, but we don't get it and another Crunch hits us below half. I then go for an earth power to a quarter, then he uses block. Oh no, we're stuck here now and I have to KO on this move, but Crunch barely doesn't KO. Then we get hit with one, but miraculously survive on 5 HP, so we can land a final one to get rid of that damn thing. Whew. Then, in comes his Charizard. And I know this thing will be a Mega, but the problem is we don't know which one, X or Y. So I take the risk and go into our best counter regardless, Marina. And it was Y, but I realized he won't have Drought. So Solar Beam's not an immediate concern, although he did get a crit on his second wing attack to bring us into the red, then Surf does just over half. Here, I switch in Emma though, who can tank a flamethrower and respawn with a return for the final victory over Team Flare. We did it. Route 18 brings about our next encounter, and we found a horde of Noctowl, and I was like, you know what? I'm far too tempted to just rock slide all five of them in one hit, so I do so. And we miss one of them, which survives. My god, it's the Faded One. Well, I catch one after all, and name it Faded. Quite fitting. And talk about destiny, we have one of my favorite evolutions ever as Amanda evolves into a monster Tyranitar. Not only that, but we also find a Haunter as our next encounter. A pretty good one at that. Arriving in Kuroway Town, I'm reminded of another big battle we have here, but first I check out Timmy, our new Haunter. And he has a plus special attack nature. Nice. I'm gonna get rid of Marina for now in place of him. After a trade back, he evolves into a Gengar, and for our battle here, Emma is unfortunately already at the level cap, but I have have a new answer. I got none other than the Gengarite from Lavera City, so against Professor Sycamore, I can obliterate every single one of his Pokemon with great coverage and a base 170 special attack Psychic or Shadow Ball. That is disgusting power, but I love it. After being sold on fresh water from a guy standing right in front of 
you guessed it, just open fresh water, we can get our next encounter, a Corsola, before we have yet another incredible evolution as Bella evolves into a Dragonite. It does have negative priority, but I mean, come on, it's a Dragonite. Our next big challenge comes in the form of the three rival battles on the bridge, but this gave us a perfect opportunity to test what Tyranitar with the Assault Vest is capable of, but right at the beginning of the first battle against Shauna, her damn Plusel not only hit a 70% accuracy thunder, but also got the Paralysis. Not good, as we have to lead with him every consecutive battle. Regardless, Earthquake did her in, then she had an Articuno of all things, but luckily Rock Slide is the perfect answer, although we got hurt quite a lot due to paralysis. Then her damn B drill took us to just 18 HP in the red before we ended the battle. Sheesh. Much worse than I was expecting, but thankfully against Tierno, a switch into Bella, our new Dragonite, was able to handle his entire team, but not without taking significant damage in the process. Finally, because you actually get to heal before the Trevor battle, we had a good run, taking down his Heracross with Bella, his Whimsicott with Rick, and finally his Rotom Fanform was easy pickings for a switch into Jimmy for the Electric Immunity, then a super effective Rock Slide to finish the battle marathon. Deathless too. Not bad. With that, we've arrived in the city where the final gym is, Snowbell. Right nearby in the winding woods, we can pick up a pile of swine encounter that I named Mike, and we also finally find a moonstone. It's about damn time. Not only that, but we also find the dubious disc for Porygon, which couldn't you have just given me an upgrade, please? The Snowbell Gym is upon us, and after enduring the completely bonkers puzzle element, we arrive at the final gym leader, Wolfric. I'll never get over the fact that he boasts like crazy about ice types, and then proceeds to send out a bug. Too good. I lead with Rick against his Ninjask, and weirdly enough, he baton passed into Mamoswine out of nowhere, so with our newly learned Tri-Attack, we could two-hit KO him, only being hit by an Earth Earthquake in the process. Then, in came Houndoom, which is no threat for Amanda the Tyranitar, who can not only eat up a flamethrower with the Assault Vest, but respond with a stab super effective rock slide to take it down, as well as his Ninjask for the 4 times damage too. Alright, not gonna lie, this is probably one of the coolest exits of a gym in the franchise. On Route 21, we can grab a Magnezone, which I nicknamed Raymond, but we had a devastating event occur as I didn't realize that a random stun fisk would have flail of all things. So, feeling confident with it in the red, I went to easily pick it off with Bella, but she got wrecked out of nowhere. I really was not expecting that at all. We also ran into a Raikou along the way, which was pretty cool, although not when Emma was out there. Luckily, Amanda saved the day. That battle granted us access to Victory Road, and... Oh god, look what AI has done to society. There used to be eight people employed at the gates to check each badge, and now it's all automated. Our Victory Road encounter ends up being... less than stellar, an Ariados that I nicknamed Monty. Near the end of the journey, we encounter Serena one last time, who challenges us to battle. She leads with a Pidgeot, and I send out Timmy, our Gengar, and immediately Mega Evolved him in order to fry that thing with a single Thunderbolt. In comes Nidoking next, and in fear of a ground move, I switch into Amanda. It looks weird, but because we have Levitate, we're immune. Amazing. But then, it turns out she has super effective Mega Horn, which hurts us quite bad, and we somehow barely don't KO with Earthquake. But I can switch into Emma from there to tank one and then take it down with return. In comes Seeking next, so I switch into Rick. She did hit us hard with a couple of waterfalls, but we took her down in two try attacks thanks to a lucky crit on the second, with us left in the red. Her final Pokemon is Audino, which went for double edge as I sent in Timmy, but I guess that it has the scrappy ability. She ends up preemptively switching into Mandibuzz though, but a Thunderbolt pulverizes it. Then since Audino can't do much against us, a few psychics finish off the battle. This team is really coming together. Well, we've arrived. Our final destination, the Pokemon League. Preparing for our final test, I find that our Dragalge has Parental Bond, essentially giving us 25% extra power on every attack, so I add it to our team and EV train him in HP and Special Attack for an Assault Vest setup, and also replace Flygon with Cheek Pouch Clefairy for more bulk and coverage. And after using the Moonstone, Fred evolves into a beastly Clefable. 
Not only that, but after searching far and wide, I finally found the upgrade as a hidden item on Route 9 so I could evolve Rick into a Porygon 2. Amazing for the Eviolite. And also found another item I've been looking for this whole time, but we'll keep that as a surprise. The first Elite Four member is Malva, who has a wickedly cool room and is normally a fire-type trainer, but she leads with a damn wall rain against Trevor. Not a good matchup, and actually a big problem for our team. Our only answer really is Rick, who I pre-poisoned for Poison Heal. It is an unreal stall battle to start things off, but eventually we emerge the victor with a third health left. Her incoming Maractus was then easily handled by Trevor with stab super effective Sludge Bomb after eating up a solar beam disgustingly well. Then, a 4 times damage flame charge from Emma ended her fortress with ease, and finally we were able to assert Talonflame dominance with huge power fly against her own. A great start all around. The second Elite Four member is Wickstrom, the medieval knight dude. He leads with a Mothim, and I lead with Amanda. What a damn matchup. Not only that, but it's time for our secret item to activate as I Mega Evolve Amanda into a monster Mega Tyranitar. Oh man, that Mothim is a goner. Although to be fair, it did hit us hard with Bug Buzz beforehand as I had used Rock Polish via TM to raise our speed. But that allowed us to do something incredible. Outspeed an Infernape of all things with Earthquake which would normally be a huge fighting threat. For his Whimsicott, I then switched into Timmy for the 4 times damage Sludge Bomb, but we got hit hard by a critical hit Hurricane and confused by it, so Trevor had to do the job instead even after a special attack drop. Final Pokemon was for Alligator, which we hit with Dragon Pulse, and got a crit, but he survived in the red, but Parental Bond smacked him again for the KO. Too good. The third Elite Four member is Drasna, who normally has a drag algae of her own now that I think about it. She leads with an Electivire, and I lead with Fred this time. I go for Cosmic Power to raise our defenses as she missed her attack. She lowers our defense with Screech, after which Moonblast does just about half. She lowers our defense again, and I was like, meh, we're only at minus one now, as Moonblast just barely doesn't KO on a sliver. I know she'll heal, so I raise her defenses again in the meantime, but then she goes for Giga Impact out of nowhere with us at regular defenses, but it obliterates Fred immediately. What the hell just happened? Uh-oh. In an act of vengeance, Mega Tyranitar responds with the Earthquake, though. Then, in comes Relicanth, who gets hit hard with one as well, but I'm fearing a crit dive, so I switch into Trevor, who tanks it and takes it down with Dragon Pulse after another. Her Slow King then went to war with Rick and completely lost the battle, after which she sent in Pyroar, which got a critical hit overheat to do massive damage on us. Quite scary, but Rick did the job with a second try attack. The last Elite Four member is Seabold, who fittingly enough actually leads with a part water type, Lantern. But I made a mistake and had accidentally full restored Rick between battles, so looking ahead to the final battle, I put a Toxic Orb on him for this one to reactivate it. And I forgot to restore his power points. Lantern immediately gets a crit on us too, bringing us below half before Tri-Attack doesn't do much to be honest. I know I need to switch, so I go into Trevor who can eat up anything that he has, so a few Dragon Pulses take him down with the help of Parental Bond coming in clutch again. The legendary Azelf comes in, so this is a switch into Amanda for the Psychic Immunity, followed by the Mega Evolution and Stab Super Effective Crunch one-hit KO. Then, in comes Milotic, a big threat. What I completely forgot was that there was a future sight attack coming in which slams Trevor, our one answer, and we survive on just 12 HP with nothing on our team that can handle this thing. Oh no. I switch in Rick, but we got brought too low by Hydro Pump, surviving on just 14 HP before Poison Heal, so... I have to do the only thing I can do, switch in Timmy to tank another Hydro Pump, then I have no choice, I hit a Thunderbolt for big damage, but get downed by another Hydro Pump. How is he hitting so many of these? From here though, that sacrifice allows Emma to outspeed and take that damn thing down. His final Pokemon is Haxorus, and incredibly enough, one single huge power fly takes him down to give us the hard-fought victory. Well, it's time. The final battle, the champion of the Kalos region, Diantha. With a completely random team, and with us only having four Pokemon left. With no strategizing possible, let's see what she's got. She leads with a damn Aegis Slash, and I send out Rick. We can literally do no damage on her, the worst matchup possible, so... Figuring she'll use King Shield, I switch in Emma, and she did. This way, I go for the Flame Charge now, and get the immediate one-hit KO. 
Let's go. In comes the bane of our existence, though, Empoleon. Of course, she has to have one of the two Pokemon we have struggled with the most. I switch in Trevor, though, and with the Assault Vest, we tank hits well, although she did get two crits in a row and started using Drill Pack. We missed Focus Blast twice before being brought to the red, and we need to hit it this time. And we do, but it doesn't do quite enough. But then Parental Bond comes in clutch yet again. Whew. In comes a big threat though, Alakazam, but here I can switch in Amanda for the Psychic Prediction, but she went for Dragon Rush? I was like, okay, weird, but I'll Mega Evolve and go for Crunch regardless. Then she goes for Dragon Dance before our Crunch brings her to a third, and it turns out it was an Illusion Dragonite. What in the world? Another Crunch then does the job though, as she just went for Safeguard. An Octillery then comes out, and here I switch into Rick, who dukes it out with her, being left on just about half before a final try attack finally does her in. Then, in comes another bane of ours, Milotic. Why? This was an absolutely insane stall war, as I forgot to heal our power points again, so we had to stick with Psychic for it, and I was just desperately hoping for the special defense drops. With all of our power points eventually expended, I did something cool. Stalled her out with Recover until I knew she had no more attacking moves, that way I could send in a fellow female Pokemon, Amanda, who couldn't get attracted. Then, take the opportunity to freely set up the Rock Polish to raise our speed and take it down in a couple Stone Edges. That that opens up a perfect opportunity to outspeed whatever it is she has in the back, and it ends up being a Mega Alakazam. And I'm like, wait, she might still outspeed us, but just goes for Calm Mind, not a damn Focus Blast thankfully, and we can nail it with a Mega Stab Super Effective Crunch for the KO and the final victory. Holy, I can't believe we pulled through that. That was an unbelievable run. Randomized Hardcore Nuzlocks are wild in every way, and it's so weird not being able to prepare for battles and just have to improvise, but so fun as well. As always, make sure to subscribe to join the Sylph Army and get us to a quarter million, and I'll see you guys next time for another challenge video.